How many of you are fitting rigid lenses? The truth of the matter is, if you're not doing these fits on a regular basis, it can be very easy to forget the techniques. While there's absolutely nothing wrong with referring these patients out, there is always the possibility that a patient currently using GP lenses ends up in your chair with a problem and expects you to fix it. For those practitioners that find themselves in this situation, let's run through some quick slit lamp findings that can help you with your decision process. Now, we're going to save issues of lens position and lens movement for another session. Today we're only going to review staining patterns. Ready? Okay, let's get started. So they take the lens out, you drop fluorescein in the eye, and you see this. What do we have here? We call this 3 and 9 o'clock staining. Why does this happen? Simply put, the cornea is drying out. Whether it's because of a poor lens periphery, diameter, lens material, the underlying idea has to do with an inadequate tear film. So, how do you fix it? Reevaluate the edges of the lens. You may need to adjust your diameter or periphery. Going to a thinner lens design often does a trick. How about this one? We call this diffuse staining. Why does this happen? When the staining is this diffuse, you want to start thinking about solutions. Is the patient having an allergic or toxic reaction to something? So how do you fix it? Open the discussion. A good case history is all you really need. Has the patient made any changes to cleaning and or storage habits? Find those changes, make the necessary adjustments. Okay, let's do another. What's this? We call this central staining. Why does this happen? The most common cause for this staining is corneal edema. How do you fix it? Reevaluate the lens material. Can you increase the decay or move to a thinner lens design? Got another one for you. We call this inferior staining. Why does this happen? Think of this like exposure keratitis. The inferior portion of the cornea is not being lubricated by the lids on blinking. How do you fix this? Revisit your 3 and 9 o'clock staining techniques. We may have to look at the edge of the lens or consider altering the diameter. Ready for another? We call this arcuate staining. Why does this happen? You have to start thinking, how tight is this lens? Look at the edges. Are they properly blended or finished? How do you fix it? If you're keeping the same lens, send it back for further blending of transitions or even polishing or re-edging. You might have to reconsider diameter or optic zone sizes. All right, last one. It's an easy one. These are foreign body tracks. Why does this happen? This has to do with a foreign body trapped under the lens. How do you fix it? Because of the pain involved, the patient probably already removed the lens. Evaluate the lens, make sure it is clear of any foreign object. As far as the patient is concerned, a lens holiday of a day or two should do the trick. As you can see, there are several types of staining patterns that can be observed in practice. Whether this is a patient you fit or someone you're seeing on follow-up, I hope this tutorial was able to show you that if you can identify the pattern, it will help lead you in the right direction in order to fix it. Do you have any additional tips? Feel free to leave your suggestions in the comment section below. Happy prescribing.